Give an efficient algorithm in O of log of n to determine k given a and n, and a good asymptotic bound on its runtime. So we're going to find the roll point again, but we're going to do better than we did with brute force. Uh, o of log n is a big hint here, but actually even if we didn't have that, we've already got a linear time algorithm. We need to do better than linear time. Uh, given that we're taking a polynomial runtime and we're going to improve on it, divide and conquer is a good thing to reach for. It's not our only tool, but it's 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 a good thing to think about if you've already got what you think is a pretty good polynomial time algorithm and you'd like to try to do better. Now, in order to have a divide and conquer algorithm, we need some way that we can take our problem and we can break it up into subproblems. And in order to do better than linear, we're going to have to ideally break it up into subproblems and throw away one of those subproblems. So we're going to probe somehow in constant time. I mean, we might look at a few elements, uh, but, uh, but only a constant number. And we're going to throw away one side or the other of the array. Uh, so one thing we could consider would be to ask, is, is this element on the left of our probe greater than this element on the right of our probe? That's kind of similar to our brute force algorithm. If we get lucky, then we've, we've found the breaking point. But what if we don't? What if the right-hand one is larger than the left-hand one? Um, let's go back up to our example again. Ooh, our example's getting pretty messy. I'm going to try and clear that off. Uh, if we probe right here, well, this will be larger than this, but we're before the roll point. And if we probe right here, then this will be larger than this, but we're after the probe point, so sorry, the, the roll point. So, so just checking if one's greater than the other doesn't really help us that much. Um, so what if we just look at one element uh, and you know, what if what if we think about this previous problem? We, we looked at 112 and we said, oh, it's larger than 35 and therefore it's one of the elements that rolled. Does that let us throw away one side or the other? Uh, do we know then that the roll point is either before or after this? We actually know it's after, right? Because everything in here has to be increasing until we get to 112. The point where we decrease must be after 112 somewhere, not necessarily the next element, but somewhere afterward, because 112 is one of the elements that rolled and all the rolled elements are together. And we know because of the constraints on the problem, at least one element rolled, that 35 rolled as well. That's a pretty nice strategy. It sounds like we're going to, let's see, given, uh, this is going to be recursive. Let's give it a name. I think we're going to be way better off with a name here. So find k. I'm going to make a nice short name because I'm writing this by hand. Uh, we're going to be given a and a left bound on what we're searching for and a right bound. Okay. Then uh, we need a, a case where we, we've emptied things out. Uh, so typically the way we do that is if our left and our right cross, then we're going to stop. So if left is greater than right, then we should know for sure what the answer is. And I'm never sure, do I return left? Do I return right? Do I return like left plus one or something? So let's just come back to it. Uh, else, okay. Otherwise, we're, we're going to find this midpoint. So mid is equal to left plus right over two. Let's take the floor of that. Does it matter if we take floor or ceiling? Uh, if left is one and right is two, left plus right is three divided by two is 1.5 and the floor gives us this. That's fine for the midpoint. One's not better than the other. Now, if left is one and right is three, we better get two as the midpoint. One plus three is four. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We're, we're going to get two as the midpoint, regardless of whether we take floor or ceiling. So we'll take floor. Who cares? Now, what's the test that we're doing? We're, we're kind of calling back to point two here, where we said we can compare this element against the first one. And if it's part of the rolled run, then it's at least as large as the first one. If it's smaller than the first one, then it's part of the unrolled data that's somewhere over there. So we're going to say if a brackets mid 
is one of the rolled elements, if it's greater than or equal to a brackets one, then we wanna go right. So we're gonna recurse, we're gonna return, find k, we're still calling it on array a of course, but we're gonna go to the right, so left is gonna get cut off, we're gonna go to mid plus one over to right. Else, we're gonna go left, so we're gonna again recurse, but this time we're gonna call find k on left, we'll keep left where it was, but we'll move right over. That ought to do it. Now, we're actually taking a left and right instead of a and n, so that's one thing to fix about our algorithm. Another thing to fix about our algorithm is that we don't know what to return here. So let's just try it on something small. Uh, so in, in here, we're gonna probe in the middle. And if this is smaller than this, in other words, the first element is the only one that gets rolled, then we go from left to mid minus one. So then left and right are gonna match. We're gonna probe here and left is gonna move forward because mid will be greater than or equal to a1 when we're comparing a1 against a1. So left will be one too large and right will be just where we wanna be. And let's say this was the element that was the last one rolled. So it's, it's three, five, one, for example, and we probe right here, then this is gonna be larger than a1, and so left is gonna go over here. So this will end up being left and this will be right. And again, right is right where we want it to be. It looks like right is the element we want. Now, that was just like guess and check. If we wanna prove that's correct, we can do it inductively we can say something about the properties of left and right inductively. So when we're done, we know for sure we've got what we want. Uh, but I think I'm satisfied with this. I think it's gonna work. So I'm just gonna say find k real, because I said I needed one that takes a and n. That's just going to return find k and I'm gonna call it on A, one to N, the whole array. It asks for a good asymptotic bound on the runtime and hilariously also says that it has to run in O of log N time. Uh, now, I mean, I suppose we could manage it in constant time somehow, uh, but a good asymptotic bound on the runtime is indeed O of log of N. And why is that? Uh, by the same analysis as binary search. So uh, let's say T, of find k, t sub find k of n, where n is the size of a, which is right minus left plus one, right? Because if right and left are equal to each other, then we're still looking at one element. Um, so that is equal to, well, our base case is when left is greater than right, left is one larger than right, in which case that's zero. So if n is equal to zero, it just does this, it just returns right. So that's constant time. And otherwise, otherwise we do some constant time work, one plus, and then we make a recursive call on something that's about half as big. It's actually potentially a little less than half as big because we've got mid plus one here and mid minus one here. So that's about t of n over two. Okay. I can safely say t of floor of n over two if I like. Uh, this is certainly an upper bound, so I can say less than or equal to here. And we've seen this analysis in the textbook. Uh, we've seen it with the master theorem and the reading. Uh, so this is O of log of n.